Hello and welcome to another episode of Blunder 2.8. I say blunder because I, you're going to watch me blunder through Blender 2.8, figuring out new techniques that I've never known before. But I want to work on this new 2D animation thing. See that there? 2D animation. Uh, you can start it right from the Blender window, or if you find your cube, you can just go up to you can go up to File New. 2D animation and boom. Note that it starts out this preset with a blank screen and if you have, I have a mouse here that I can draw with, but I also have a tablet with a pen. So <clears throat> I'm going to use the bamboo tablet with the pen and see if that makes it a bit easier to blunder through here. My goal is to work on not just animation, but also work on creating a storyboard. So I'm going to create a storyboard in Blender. Now, you will note that when you do your first sketch as the file opens, it starts on frame one down here. And you can then grab that and move it on to the next frame, or you can hit the the arrow key. So I'm hitting the arrow key, and then I can move things. And if you go to frame two, and then you uh, create, take your sun and draw it over it, it then goes to onion skin automatically and shows these um, the previous frame. And then when you go to frame three, if you draw it will onion skin out frame one and show you the frame two and so on so that eventually you can <clears throat> start working on an animation and I'm being really sloppy here you'll know when you hit that arrow key you don't see anything change on the screen, you only see the change down here as the frame advances now to frame seven. It's when you begin to draw that it then onion skins the rest out. And then when you rewind and you play, oh, that's going backwards. Yeah, yeah you start to get motion there, as you can see. So it creates traditional 2D animation if you scroll through. So <clears throat> if we want a storyboard in Blender, <clears throat> I think it really helps if you're storyboarding uh, because I know you didn't come into this program to be an animator. You came in to learn about sustainability. And we want to use these tools to do better digital storytelling about sustainability. So you don't have to come in and be an artist. So we're going to use a lot of, um, a lot of crutches. And the crutch that I'm going to use now is I'm going to get a, um, well, there's a lot of tutorials out there. I'm going to try to get a typical uh, comic book panel and bring that in. <laughs> or we can look at storyboard template. <laughs> Let's see what they have for storyboard template. See what exists out there in the wide world of the web. So here's some storyboard templates. They're not as exciting as comic books, and we'll talk about that but there are some free storyboard templates <coughs> that you can get. Or you can create storyboards online. But let's see if we download PDF storyboard templates. <coughs> so it's a zip. And where did it download to? landscape and portrait let's probably go into a landscape for the time being and i guess i just download everything so i guess the way that we do this is we have a lot of different storyboard templates in the zip let's just download that zip and let's see where it show in folder it's in my downloads folder and let me unzip it to its own folder <coughs> and there it is and depending on what you're working with 
Uh, we have to see if Blender will inform, in fact, import as images, if it will import a storyboard as a PDF. So it may not be that you can do that directly in the animation thing. You might have to go to a different mode, like object mode. And we will check that out and get back to you. I first want to point out that when you're in the uh, 2D world, you're actually in the 3D world, as you can see. And there's a camera there, and it's the camera that you're looking through. And so when you hit the zero, let me turn on my screencast keys so you can see what I'm, what I'm doing here. So as left mouse, actually you can't see that because now the color against white is far too, far too light. So let's see if that works. No, it doesn't. Why don't you see it? Oh, because screencast keys went off. There we go. Um, <clears throat> so you can see that, yeah, there's, there's a camera there. And when you hit one, the one key, number pad one, you're in the uh, front orthographic and the camera uh, appears. But when you look through the camera by hitting zero, then you see the screen. And that's what you're ah, basically fine. doing. So, sorry, there's noise from the video thing. <clears throat> and one of the things that you can do is you can set things up so that you have different collections that act as layers. So if I make a new collection and I call this collection the, uh, let me call this my... Um, sketch layer one and then I can move the stroke actually into that layer and whatever the camera is looking at <clears throat> if I hit three you can see that my sketch is then in the foreground and then I can make another layer which I can call, uh, in collection four, I can call this one background. So you're not, you're not doing things the way that you used to think of doing them, uh, where you have a, uh, a background painted in the same uh, plane as you do everything else here, because you're working in 3D, you could do a background image, but you'd have to uh, create a plane to write on that would be behind this one. And there's a couple different ways you could do that. One is just to scroll right through it. So if you're looking through the camera and you scroll through it, I imagine now, let me see if I'm right or wrong, that if I draw something here, let me see what happens, is it, now it's still on that same layer. So <clears throat> I've got to figure out right now how to make a layer back here for sketching on because 2D doesn't seem to want to do that right now, but it, it can. It's just that right now everything's going on to whatever this layer is and and not letting me draw on the back layer. But I know that you can, in fact, draw in any dimension that you want to. Uh, we just have to make that work. So let me see now. So what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to try to add a background image by going into object mode. I was in draw. That's the default for 2D animation. But I'm going to go to object mode and I'm going to say add. And I can add a reference image or a background image. Or I can add an empty called image. I'm going to try that one. And then you see it came in flat. So I'm going to rotate it on the on the x-axis by 90 degrees and I'm going to scale it up and that reference image is now it's uh, it's got to be moved G in Y and move it back all right so I have a reference image here it doesn't kind of show up through there, but 
it may be now that if I open over here for that empty reference image and open a picture, and the picture is going to be the storyboard that I got. So where did I? Storyboard templates. Now, I don't know if this will allow me to open a PDF. Maybe there's something in Photoshop portrait. Let's see. Those are type GIMP, but what are they? Does it say the type of image? It doesn't say A4 storyboard. Or maybe a PDF will work. So it's worth checking out. And we'll do the landscape one. And three panel, four panel, six panel. Let's do a six panel one. Hmm. Doesn't seem to like that. It will look like this, which is great. And while I have this open, just in case, I guess I can take a screenshot of it as a JPEG. Because it may be, in fact, that that's all I can do for that. So let me save this as, as a, uh, I'll save it as six panel storyboard template and save that in case I need it. But uh, let me see. <clears throat> Where was that? It was in downloads. So users and then downloads. And then I have the storyboard template here. I should add a bookmark. My downloads folder is now a bookmark so I can find it again. But let's see, does it do PDFs? Nope, doesn't recognize PDF, so forget that. Does it do Photoshop files? Yes, Photoshop file it seems like it does, and the one that has six is, 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 hmm, maybe we should look at it as by the, uh, My date display as a vertical list. And where's the six panel? There's the six panel. So ah, there we go. So, all right. Now, because we have that, we can now start our work as a uh, within that frame and use Blender to make an actual storyboard. Now, first, I'm going to get rid of my little animation there because it's no longer relevant. And so I'm going to select all those keyframes and I'm going to delete them. X, delete keyframes. All right. And somehow in here, where did that come from? I'm just going to delete that because these are objects. They're all objects. So on frame one, as you can see, I'm actually shooting with the camera, the storyboard, which is in my background layers. If I turn that off, it goes away. You see, so we've got to think in 3D that everything in Blender is setting the stage and then shooting with the camera. So when you're using Blender to do 2D work, you're just taking a straight on picture of a two dimensional plane. And that gives you the opportunity to do all sorts of creative camera moves later on. And because I've made that empty in the background of where the actual sketch layers are, uh, when I go to, to write on it, when I get back into draw mode, and that's not going to happen until I, until I do what? Until I get onto the sketch layer or collection there, sketch layer. So I'm going to call this now um, story board template six panel. 
panel and when I go to my sketch layer here which you can't see I've got to get into a different mode I've got to get into my drawing mode so I mean it, it's not letting me get there so I've got to figure that out for a moment why for example am I unable to go back to drawing 3d cursor I'm in animation when I do that or oh, annotation but I don't want annotation that's not what I'm interested in doing I'm interested in getting back to animating so this may happen to you let me figure out how to make this work because annotations is supposed to work and hold on. I think what happened is I think I may have erased uh, I may have erased my grease pencil um, so although I have something here I think what I need to do here is I need to add a grease pencil blank and that yeah that grease pencil is what I should be able to use to draw unfortunately Tell it's me what not to... letting me draw and I'm not sure why the opacity is it Let's see is anything happening in here it's not happening nothing's happening the plane that I'm drawing on just ain't happening ah gotta go into draw mode there we go all right so let me undo that keyframe and let me oops let me hit x delete it hey delete it delete it okay so i'm in draw mode which i had to get to from the i was in object mode but i added a grease pencil remember i went to add and I went to grease pencil blank and I added that grease pencil it's in there it shouldn't be in the background layer though I'm gonna move it up to the sketch layer there we go that's my sketch layer and I have to pick draw mode and then I can come right on into this panel and let me get my tablet here and see if I'm <clears throat> if I'm making a storyboard then I'm telling a story in these panels so Let's see if I come over here and I take my stylus. There we go. And I so this is project is uh, in visioning sustainability. Uh, trying to learn how to write with sustainability. Sustainability. Ability. Anyway, that's the project. Um, the scene is scene one. It's shot one, and I don't know what I'm going to pick for the shot size. But if we uh, did this, the first scene might be my character, and he's saying, so I make a circle through his head, and he's standing here, and he's pointing over to something in the distance there. And sort of shot like that, and he says, um, he says, give him some eyes, give him a nose, give him some mouth, give him some hair over there. We give him and, eye. and then he says under here, and what he's pointing to is he's pointing to a solar city, so he needs another eye, right? Yeah. He's pointing to a Solar Cities IBC tank biodigester out there in the distance. And it says something to the effect of um, <clears throat> <clears throat> let me show you. Now, you can write this for the dialogue. Or, of course, Blender has a lot of other tricks that you can do. One is you can come out of draw and go back into object mode. These are all objects. We can select 
Oop, that's one big object. So if I wanted to get rid of that, I can't be in object mode again. I need to go select everything and come into edit mode and say, you know what? I really didn't want that part of it in there. So let me delete that and delete all the oof. See? Let me delete these uh, point. Uh, I better use a mouse. You're gonna have to switch back and forth between using the mouse for when you're uh, doing selections and using uh, the the um, uh, using the mouse and using the drawing pad at different times. So got rid of that. All right. So get out of edit mode. And there's a great interference here with my tablet pad and my mouse. They're competing with each other. Um, get to object mode and then create a new object. And that object here can be a text object. And the text object, where did it come in? Well, it's somewhere, so I'm hitting the point key to try to find it. There it is, whoa, text. Text always comes in flat on the ground. So when you get your first text object in, you're gonna have to rotate it on the x-axis 90 degrees, and then you have text. And then you can move that text with the G key over where you want, go back to your camera view, and then you can scale that text object to the size that you want here and move it up and maybe scale a little lower there. And so now you can put your dialog in, but you'll have to now to do that, go into edit mode for that text. When you're there, you'll type in, um, quote, uh, would you like to learn how to build a Solar Cities Biodigester. And <laughs> that that object then is, would you like to learn how to build a Solar Cities Biodigester? And you can move that object around. It doesn't show up because it doesn't have any colors. So it's that usual thing for any object. You want to create a material for it and give it a color. And if black is your default for making a storyboard, then yeah, make it black, you know, and then it comes out like that. It looks like text. So we're really using Blender as though we were just doing a traditional pencil and paper um, storyboard, but we're using Blender to do it, which is really cool. I can come back into my G pencil layer and <clears throat> I can make a new layer for every frame if I wanted to that probably would give you the most flexibility, or you can use the same layer and just keep going. But let's say we want to use separate layers. So this layer here, I can copy and then paste it, and then I've got a G Pencil 001 that I can put in here. It has the same information on it, but now that I'm on G Pencil 001, I can delete that, and it doesn't do anything to, oh, sorry. Um, I should be able to erase what I wrote there. Is this what I want to do? Is that the way I want to do it? Let's see. If I go into edit mode and I use my bounding box and select what I drew there and then erase all those points, then as you can see, I have that layer, but now I have this new layer. In fact, this new layer, grease pencil, I should also, I should erase everything because I, I actually don't need anything in there. So I don't need this either in that new layer but it's showing up because it's in the original Grease Pencil layer. So Grease Pencil 001 is where I'm working now. And if I go now into draw mode, now I can come in and I can draw my second panel and they're each gonna be separate layers. So since they're separate layers, then uh, they don't compete with one another and I can go back and edit them as I like. So here he says, would you like to learn how to build a Solar Cities uh, biodigester? Um, let's go to a close up of his face looking somewhat more sincere. So he's got his eyes there and his eye there and he's got his nose and his mouth and he smiles and he says, you know, sort of close up so we get the personality there. He's got his hair there. And we say, <coughs> we still see the digester in the background there. And he says, Basically, it's easier than you think. And so then we go back to our object mode and we create 
a new object or take this object because we've already sized it and colored it and hit shift D and bring it over and you'll see it made a copy text 001 and now that I'm on that text I can edit it by hitting tab and it should let me yep, erase that and type in it's easier than you think and that's the next line of dialogue and hit tab and we're we're there all right so you can see how we would be able to, to do that and, and just build up our storyboard little by little but blender's amazing for doing these things because what if you don't want to draw much of anything <clears throat> well <clears throat> you can make your storyboard i could actually take an object and if i want to keep it in the shot i'm working in 3d so why not import if I have it here, let's go to file. Let me save this, by the way. Save as. Did we even give this a name? No, this is called Storyboard. Oops. Storyboard. Storyboarding in Blender tutorial. All right. So we'll save that in our sustainability tutorials. Boom. Okay, we saved that. So. <clears throat> I can come in here and I can say, hey, you know what? Just like in, in everything else we do in Blender, I can import an object. And somewhere in here, I think I have, I've got a Ford Escape. I don't think I know if I have a uh, Blender add-ons. Somewhere in here, I should have a, uh, no, I don't have a 3D. Well, let's go get it. Why not just show you the whole process? Um, and then we'll worry about that later. So go online. We're on an IBC tank. That doesn't look quite like the digester yet, but I've modeled one, and I'll eventually get that uh, in. But let's go to 3D Warehouse at SketchUp.com. And ba -da -da -ba -da -ba -da boom, wait for it, wait for it, wait for it, wait for it. we got slowness here. Yep. And then I'm going to put in uh, IBC. And there it goes. And IBC, there's a bunch of IBCs. Well, let's use, uh, let's see which one we want. There's that one there, there's this one here. This is for a storyboard, so it doesn't have to be detailed. This IBC tank will work just fine for us. It's simple and it comes down as an untitled zip, show it in the folder, and let's name that zip file. I'll be, oops, I'll be, blah, 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 blah. I'll be C simple. And take that and cut it or leave it. Let's cut it and put it into our tutorials folder in our 3D warehouse models. So we have it consistently pasted in there. Once again, unzip it. 7-Zip is the program that's free that I use. Extract it to its own folder with the same name. Since you already bothered to name it, IBC Simple. Change the name model to IBC simple. Don't mess with the folder called model because there's internal XMLs that want those textures that call them the concrete and stuff. But that's a fine, good thing. Now go here and import, import Colada and find your model in the IBC simple. There it is, IBC simple IBA. And bing, it comes in, it came in. And where is it? It's, um, it's to even come in at all. It can be, ooh, sometimes Blender's really, f oh, there it is. It's huge. Oh my goodness gracious. What are we going to do? What are we going to do? Bring it down, bring it down, bring it down. So yeah, you're in the 3D world, right? And see that dot? That dot is the origin, which is not tied to the geometry. And there's a couple of other dots there. Blender and SketchUp don't play all that nicely together sometimes. So I'm going to select the thing and do Control J to join the object if I can. Maybe it won't let me. And I'm going to go to Object and Set Origin to Geometry. Oh boy, it's all there. And I want to deparent everything. Um, Alt P, clear parent, but keep transformation. And good, I can get rid of these stupid dots there that SketchUp provided. Goodbye dot. And there's that. Thing with and let me do a bounding box and select the other parts. Now I'm going to join them. Control J. Now I have one object. Hopefully, one instance, one object. I'm going to call that IBC simple. 
Now that I have my IBC tank, here's what's it works. It doesn't freeze my computer. So I have this IBC tank that I can move around in space, right? And I can then move it on the y-axis right through to where my drawing is. And I can say, hey, you know what, little IBC tank? How about if I put you and rotate you a little bit and uh, rotate you in the x-axis? You can kind of see the top. I can play with this all I want to and make it like it's part of the scene because after all, when you start viewing it in 2D, you don't know what's 3D because all you're doing is rendering your comic book or your storyboard in 2D. So everything's going to look 2D anyway, but you have ultimate flexibility enough to draw a darn thing. If you have objects in your story <laughs> that you're preparing for your 3D fly-through, walk-through, for your video game, you can still do two-dimensional storyboards. And so you can just suggest stuff. And look, I can hit Shift-D. Move this over here, and because it's a closer shot, I can move it up there, move it in Y, send it back a little bit, move it up, move it in. But of course, it now looks like it's in the foreground when it should be in the background, and that's something that you have to play with as well. But that's my, my basic point is that you have this control. Now, yeah, it's sticking through here, and what I would have to do ultimately really is to put a white screen. Like I can actually take this, see, and come on the top, shift D and make a new copy and then go G in Y and move it back. All right. That one I can keep white. This one I can make transparent. So how do I do that? I go to, bing, I go to, I've got it selected and I want to go to something something in here so let me do here it is use alpha and transparency and then boom see so now that I've made it transparent what the camera is doing is looking through one that's transparent where I'm drawing and then one that is uh, opaque so I can grab my uh, yeah yeah that guy and now I can do G and Y and move him back so that he's really behind the character. And then if I want to fill in the character, so I want to go back to this, this one here and go back to drawing. So I'm back in drawing, right? So if I wanted to now change the color of my brush, this grease pencil layer just has one layer right now but maybe I add another layer and this layer, I have an opacity. I go to my materials and I tell this layer to be the color that is, that is, oh, give me a red shirt. Oh, everything came red. Why? Because that's grease pencil one. So maybe I have to do another grease pencil. I probably do because otherwise, but I just want to show you, see how I'm now drawing over that object because it's on this layer. That's my only point. And the size of this brush, the size of this brush, how do I change the size of this brush? Size of brush, go to here and then say, for this, that the size of the brush is adjustments. Is that what I'm adjusting? Tint color, factor, stroke thickness. Does that work? <gasps> yeah, see, I make the stroke thicker or I make the Hash index, view layer, tint color. There's other things I should be able to do with this. And, um, and make that brush thicker and thicker and thicker. Or you have these, the whole, that whole fill thing. Oops, that's just filling in the entire, oh my god, what did I do? I screwed everything up. Didn't mean to do that. Let's undo it. Ding, 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 ding. Okay. Um, it's just like any other paint tool, but there's this different paint, like excuse it, erase, but here is a draw, but then there's like a box. Can I do that? Ah, but it's not filled unless I fill in the box. If it'll let me, it won't, it won't let me it's because I didn't confirm it. I don't know. Let me see. Try it again. Fill in the box. Nah, kind of. Yeah, not so good. Um, but. Annotate, yeah, draw. Oh, I know where. 
pencil material radius. Get this huge radius. Now we're talking. There we go. See? So you go up here to radius and you say, I want this radius to make this massive brush here. So now that's in front of the box, the IBC tank. So you really are working in multiple dimensions. And that once I've made this transparent, of course, of course, there's a horse, of course, of course, then I can move this object here. I can also move it back, G-Y, and send it back here. Because when I look at it from the front, given perspective and all, it works fine. It works just fine. And so you, can, you don't have to make this box bigger or smaller. It can be the same size box, and you can use perspective to make it look two-dimensional. This is what's amazing about thinking in 5D. You're, you're thinking in a three-dimensional space and a one dimension of time that's down here because you can do animations. And then the data layers, the fifth dimension or up to 11 dimension, who knows. And, but you're then thinking, I'm going to take the three-dimensional world that I see, or the four-dimensional world that I inhabit, and I'm going to turn it into a two-dimensional representation and what artists have always done in the past, because they were bound with paper and pencil, is they were forced to render the four-dimensional world that we inhabit into two dimensions, working in two dimensions. And it was awkward. But now we can create these things in three dimensions and then render them. And the way you render it out once you've finished your, your thing is you can, then, uh, you can then go up to render and you can render the image. And there it is. But we're not seeing the lines because the camera isn't seeing through them for some reason. So I've got to figure out why that's not. Maybe, maybe, maybe because the, the background. What did I call this? What is this object? This object here is somehow lost. To the world. What is this object? It says template panel 001. So IBC simple 001, SketchUp layer. Where are you? You are in storyboard template. You're in the scene collection. But where are you? I don't find you. I certainly don't find you. There you are. You're there. Um, it may be that rendering is not on for this layer. Now, how do you do that? You go into this here and you you turn on rendering. So there's disable in renders and enable in renders. And then you can see what renders, but actually it does say that this is going to render. So I don't know why it's not rendering those lines. Uh, let's see what happens when I click on this object. Oops. I click on this one, and that's the one that we made op no opacity. So now if I bring that forward, and I render, nah, still ain't rendering those, those lines. So that's something to figure out. But at least we're getting somewhere in terms of being able to create a printable 3D thing. I don't know why these lines aren't showing up. Maybe it doesn't show up. Oh, it doesn't show up the reference image at all because it was an empty reference image. Maybe, maybe that's why. Maybe that those images don't show up when you. It could be that. It could be that because I don't see anything, no, none of the text, none of the project. It may be that that's just a reference image, and reference images don't seem to show up because what we're getting is only when we render, we're just getting the objects that we put in. You can check this, too, by hitting Z here and going to Rendered. Oh. Seems to be working there. No, it's not doing the lines. Not yet. So we'll have to figure that out. Like, why is it not doing the lines? But I think you get the idea of how you can use the template. And if you had to, and let's just say we absolutely 
can't figure a way to get the background image to render, then what you would do is you would go into a new grease pencil. So you would go add grease pencil blank, and that would show up. And then I might put this into sort of the sketch layer. I might put this into the background layer, and I might call this um, grease pencil template. And then go to draw for that and pick things and draw these actual boxes out. Although that is absurdly thick, what I just did. Why is that? Its opacity should be. Okay, what are we doing here? Keyframe display. This thing is frozen for some reason. Why is that? No, nope, don't do that. Stop it. Stop it. It's getting weird on me. It's getting funky. All right, what's going on here? Do I have to commit to it by hitting enter? Yeah, I committed to it. Yeah, but uh, why is it not letting me change? In the opacity I can change, certainly. The tint color, the stroke thickness, I can make smaller. Yeah, we're getting there. What about the color? The color, the color, the color. That's the onion skin. The color. Is there a color? Yeah, the color would be in here. And I can tell it, yes, I want it to be um, not material 2. I'm going to get rid of that one. And I'm going to go and give it its own new material. Uh, material 3. Look at that. What is the color preview? No surface stroke color. Well, it's supposed to be the right color, black. But let me see. Yeah, yeah, yeah we can. Okay, just now we know that it is showing that color. So I'm just call that blue. So I know it's blue. Um, blur, blue, blue. All right. So now that we have, uh, now that we are. Uh, Wasting your time with my spelling errors. Um, that box. Now, if I go to object mode, and I or actually I go to edit mode, edit mode, and then I uh, no, I can do object mode. It's fine. I go S for no, not you, you, and then go to object mode. It's fine. Scale it a bit. I see that the origin is messed up, so I want to go set origin to geometry, puts it in the center, makes it easier to do my scaling. Now that I have that, I can shift D and move it over here, and shift D and move it over there, and I can build my own my own um, storyboard from the template that I can tweak later. And then when I go to render it, I should see, yep, my storyboard panels. Okay, that's probably the best thing to do. We're using templates just to get the sort of standard form in, but we can do everything else that we want to. Um, like even this here, like if I want to go and do a line and put these lines from my storyboard, that's a bit exaggerated. It's too thick for sure. But um, I'll mess with that in a second. I don't know when. The options, the custom properties, the fill. I'll, I'll deal with that later. But I'm just trying to get the basic idea that you can put your lines in and uh, and then go back and edit them, just so that you can see how quickly you can set up a template. And once you've got templates set up, you can always come back and say, well, "No, I'm picking now my six-panel storyboard," and that way. When we go to, let me save this, when we go to render it, we're also going to see those lines. So the tools are all there for creating any kind of storyboard. The neat thing is, is that you then have the ability to move stuff around, which you'd never have in any other world. So for example, I go back to object mode and I click on this object. So what's super cool is, of course, you can shift D this whole thing. Oops, see. I need to select it, shift D it, and move it over here to go back to a certain shot. Uh, of course, you're going to need to edit this and 
get rid of the extraneous stuff that's in there. And now we know we don't need that sketch of the IBC tank. But you have the capability of taking this and, of course, rotating this uh, guy. Of course, his, his, his origin. There's always this thing of transforming the origin to geometry so you can do better things with it. But you can oops, rotate it like that to get a different shot. And you can scale it up or down. So if you want to have this same sort of stick figure and you want to show him from a different angle or put him in the center, and let me go back to edit and get rid of this spurious piece of pointillage there, then you can take your IBC tank, if I can get it, or grab it from up here because I'm in the grease pencil edit mode, so let me get out of that and let me then go and get that IBC tank and drag it over. Oops, I didn't want to drag it over. I'm duplicate it and drag it over. And then scale it for works for us then. And maybe it needs to be moved forward or back. I don't know. Where is it? Yeah, I'm just showing it now. So there's an unlimited amount of things you can do with this because you've got your character. That's what's really cool about this. And typing is not a problem because once you've got these objects, I text this text here, you shift that over here, control G, move, I'm going to have to do it. Hey, hey, text one. Shouldn't be in edit mode, should be in object mode. Okay. Shift, oops, not shift that. No, no, no. Shift, I wish it was shift T, wasn't it? Yeah, move it over here and then tab and edit it and continue. Hmm. Edit mode, come on. Backspace, backspace, what's going on here? Why can't I edit you? Why can't I edit you? Who are you? You're text two. And I've told you that I want to edit you. So I clicked on you. And I hit backspace, and it didn't let me backspace it. Let me see. Go back to object mode, click on this object, and maybe put the origin to the geometry, it goes to the center, and I got a tab, and can I get in and edit this? Yes, I can. Right. So, would you like to learn to build a solar survival register? It's easier than you think. <coughs> <coughs> of course, it all starts with an IBC tank, which where it's going down. You can get almost everywhere in the world. And yeah, so I've I've messed this up a little bit in terms of I've got to break it up here. I should have hit a carriage return. I don't know how to get back in to get my carriage return. I have to hit backspace and go all the way back. There should be a way, though, wait a minute. Since you there should be a way to use the arrow keys. Yeah, you can use the arrow keys. And there, using the arrow key, hit your enter and then move forward and get rid of the carriage return that I put in there. And then tab it and then move it. And of course, if it's too big, you can scale it. The point is just that you can really be very flexible with this, with minimal effort. Um, the other cool thing is that if you don't know how to draw yourself, for example, why not bring a picture of yourself in? Because you can certainly do that. So I must have a picture of myself somewhere. So if I go and make another Another, well, this time I think what I'll be doing is adding an image for reference. And I need to find an image of myself. So whoever you're going to draw, we want to do this not by name, not by size. Why won't it let me? Oh, thumbnails. Okay. 
and you want to put in your images. Do I have any images? I don't know. In pictures, or there's a pictures folder here. Program files, users, default user, <coughs> 3D objects, and documents, and favorites. Pictures should be up here somewhere. Favorites. Yeah, favorites. I don't have it in favorites. Yeah. I don't have anything in favorites. What I don't do you use have? favorites. Hmm. Downloads. Wind turbines, solar panels. Well, we might as well download a picture. So, but anything you want to draw, basically. But let's just say I'm gonna look for, look for me, and I would go. Uh, Thomas Culhane, and there's so many different Thomas Culhanes, but I seem to come up there. Um, USF, and then go to images, and find an image of, that's funny, that's all that comes up when we do that. That's not me, I tell you, that's not me, and that's a cheesy photo of me. Um, Thomas Culhane, maybe I should be putting in TH Culhane. I think people know me as TH more than Thomas. You know, USF and biogas comes up. A lot of stuff. And <clears throat> but not that many pictures. Maybe I should be looking at Google images instead. Maybe Ecosia doesn't have a lot of me. Google.com. <clears throat> and now Culhane biogas and images. Yeah, for example. So this is a, a pretty good one that you could model after, because here I am actually teaching how to build a IBC biodigester. So I'm going to save this image into our. Oh, there's a picture file. There's another one there, so I can get that. So this is th Florida IBC. And then there's another one, which is save image as TH Portugal Pusheen. And yeah, and there's that one there, but I'm not going to deal with that right now. I just want to go in here and find the, find that folder, which I thought was just a downloads folder, but I think it's in C. Or is it in D? I need to actually go look and see where it downloaded to. When you do save image as, where do you go? It went into this PC pictures. Where this PC pictures is. This PC is usually the OS C drive, and it's usually under users, and it's usually under wherever we can find pictures. But where does it say pictures? My documents. Is it under my documents? File paths can be such a pain to find sometimes. That's why you really need to bookmark your favorites once you do find it. Because this ain't uh, desktop pictures. There it is. Huh. Okay, so I'm going to bookmark that. Bing! I'll be able to find it very easily. So there is a picture here that I'm going to use. I'm going to load that reference image. And you see the reference image is here. And I can move it around, but it's behind where I want to move it, which is okay, except it's too far behind. It's behind the opaque one. So let me move it in Y and move it forward, but just behind. Ooh, I thought, I thought this, this guy was opaque. Oh, because I, I changed this back to completely uh, opaque. And so I need to go back to the properties of, which properties was it? Was it this one here? using the alpha, and then, yeah, make it transparent. So now the reference image is there, and I can play with the reference image. I've got to make sure that this is the one I'm talking about, and that would be um, Culhane Florida image, <clears throat> and move that image around and scale it 
and bring it in. Now you can do an entire storyboard just with photographs. That is your uh, prerogative. Can you either trace it or... Or you can trace it, yeah. So... Or you just put pictures. Well, you could just put pictures, unless you don't want that guy in there, for example, but you could always paint him out. Um, but part of the fun is being able to take this image and make it semi-opaque so you can just begin to see it and come in and you can draw let me get back to my tablet here where's my pen it's down oh, where did it go um, let me pause so we can do the time honored technique of rotoscoping once we get back to our grease pencil Although, where was that template? That was there. We did that one. We probably want to just make a new grease pencil. So we're going to add a grease pencil blank. And that one comes up. And I'm going to call this one, I'll call it, I'll just call it Rotoscope, which is the old name, and I'll call it Rotoscope 1, um, TH Florida. And with this rotoscope, I can zoom all my way in and start to start to uh, go to the draw mode. And oopsie, that was way too big a stroke. Way, way too big. Because my pencil has this enormous radius, so go out of that. Make the radius rather small. That's still too big. So forget that. Make it even smaller. Let's make it like maybe make it six pixels. Yeah, that'll work. And uh, I don't want to do a line, of course. So, we're going to hit escape on that. Um, we're going to oh, I've got to save the battery for now. Be right back with you. So, I can come on my, my pad here, and I'm going to move. I don't want a straight line. I'm going to go to free draw, and I'm going to, although, 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 wait a minute. You might as well use a circle. Or this right and then move that circle over the head and then scale that circle if it'll let me it'll let me scale it up scale it because why 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 bother trying to make a, a nice circle when you have a circle tool here because once I have the circle then I can go back into my drawing mode Pick a different, oh, I have to commit to it, I have to enter. Hey, it disappeared, why? Where are you, circle? Where are you? Oh, the circle is there, but the reference image ain't not. And somehow the reference image is dominating the circle so that we can't see it. So maybe I have to, where's my reference image? So that reference image, which Back to object is this one here, I believe. All right, it's that one there. Well, it wasn't in the way, but it's really hard. Oh, we've ended up drawing on something else, haven't we? Let me see. How did we end up drawing on the? Looks like we were drawing on the wrong surface because you can see the somewhere. You can see what I was drawing. I don't really, there it is, it's like way over here, but what, what is it, where is it? The grease pencil, grease pencil, the new grease pencil is somewhere else. And yeah, there's SketchUp layer, like these ones here are in the right layer, but that grease pencil was somewhere in the template layer, and I... I didn't want it to be in the template layer, 
there it is, rotoscope. So I think I've got to lift the rotoscope up into my sketch layer. And it's way back there. It's not on the sketch layer. So that's why it's not being seen. So I got to move it forward. And now, <coughs> yeah, now it shows up. It's a bit big, so it should be scaled. And it's got its origin in the wrong place. Now it's easier to work with. But the sketch line is, is way too big. Um, I'm not really sure if I shouldn't just start this one over again. But I'm just giving you the idea that when you go then into draw mode in here, then you can come in here and then pick your pencil and begin to work on the... Let me go back to my tablet here. Make it easier for me. Take my tablet and then, uh, you know, sketch in the eye there and sketch in the eye here and get the nose and get the cheesy grin and the eyebrows. So you're just tracing like you did when you were a kid and calling it rotoscoping. Right. And yeah, you can do a better job of putting in hairlines and such later on if you want to. But if you just wanted to do a placeholder, that's all you would do. And if you want to erase stuff, you hit the, um, is it the shift key? No, nope. control, yeah, it's the control key. And then you can erase lines that you didn't like. And then come back and keep drawing your figures. Oops, didn't want to do that. And sketch that stuff. All right. And you have you have unlimited flexibility with, with how you wanna create your character then. So that you can even draw on the fingers if you want to. Is that you? Yeah, that's me. Oh. And then for something like the uh, the Uniseal, then once again, you know, you can make a Uniseal. And then you can uh, move it over with uh, with G. How did you make it? That's good. Well, because I'm using the, the computer. The You're computer. Not using you. Yeah, and you just you drag that and then drag it over, and then you go back to after you commit that, you go back to your pen, uh, your digital pen, and you, oops, you pick your drawing pen. It was the one, one that one escape. Go up to the drawing pen. Won't let me do it. Oh, you have something on your eye. Oh, yeah. Go back to your drawing pen and then come in here and bring it down and begin to sketch the fingers that are holding it. All right, so. The point being, and you can also, what other, other objects are in the scene, you can be as detailed as you want or not because it's all up to you. The point that I'm trying to make of course is that once you've done that when you when you turn off or let's see when you when you render the image there you see down here the reference image doesn't get rendered. So why you went to put the whole thing in? Hmm?
Yeah, you might. You might do that. You might do that. But um, my point is then, then when you when you tab into this uh, as an object mode, then this character can be sized up mm -hmm. so that he can speak, and you don't need the, the when you actually render this image, then you see that. Ah, it's better. Yeah. So you can get reference images, and you can work with them, or you can make your own little cartoons and set up the shots the way you want to, because ultimately that's what Blender is all about. So that's good, good fun. Uh, another thing that we can do, and let me just save this. The last thing I want to show in this tutorial is um, and I'm going to make the render, the render, uh, the background image. Um, I got to make it so that it's not visible. So let me go to here and find a way to click on it because I'm getting a mess here. That one there. I'm not going to erase it. It shows up when I click on it. I'm just going to make it invisible. And now, one of the cool things I was talking about was the animation. So we can zoom in here. And with this shot, and let me let me go to the camera view and lift this up. Now I have the capability, which is I think super spectacular, to look at that timeline down here and advance a frame and take my pen and oops, I need to be in draw mode, of course. How to be in draw? Ooh, why can't I get in draw mode? There. Go to draw mode, and in this draw mode, if I oh, that was bad. Did you skip to the next slide? I didn't mean to. Yeah, but it's supposed to onion skin. I don't know why it's not onion skinning, because I should be able to draw on it. Oops, mm -hmm. didn't mean to do that. I should be able to advance a frame and see that image. Why can't I see it? Um, this grease pencil, maybe I'm not in the same grease pencil. That would explain a lot. So I'm in object mode. No, that's the object. If I go to edit mode and get rid of these extraneous lines here, that'll help. I don't want those. But now in <clears throat> object mode, uh, do I not have the onion skin effect on? Is there something I'm doing wrong? Display custom keyframes. Let me pause and look for it and get back to you. If something went wrong, but I, I have another technique, a way of doing this that may be less labor intensive. I'm going to duplicate this frame and move it. Oh, oh didn't work. Duplicate it and drag. Uh, yeah. Competing mouse and tablet. That is the bad thing there. Let's try it again. Duplicate this. Yeah, drag it out so that I have another keyframe here. And with that keyframe, I'm going to in draw, I'm going to erase. Oops, control. I'm going to erase the mouth. I need to make that smaller. How do I do that? Why even erase it? It's good now. There we go. I'm going to erase. Oops. I'm going to erase the mouth. And I'm going to draw in a new mouth. Although it's way too wide. Let me make my pixel radius much smaller, maybe one pixel. Right. And then what happens is he can begin to talk. Of course, we could do a better animation than that, but that gives you an idea of the power of this. I can also make the eyes, um, if I shift, erase, oops, not shift, it's control, erase the eye.
and make the eyes into a slit like he's blinking then he blinks and talks so you have this ability and let me go to make it only just basically two frames long so I can just play it over and over in a loop you basically have this ability to animate certain frames of your storyboard which is kind of cool because you can keep setting your different camera angles and tell a story and uh, and then break in and animate it and you can see that it's animating